Hello, I'm Dr. True Watt. Today is uh, May 12th, Tuesday of 2009. I'm here to, do, to present this update to explain exactly what the so-called swine flu is all about, how it differs from the seasonal uh, flu that, that we uh, all have and, and circulate each year, and more importantly, how it relates to the pandemic flu scare, the so-called bird flu scare, that America has been primed for, America and the world for that matter, since roughly 2005. We're going to give you some very, very important updates and more importantly show you some ways to protect yourself and your family that I guarantee you you won't hear on CNN or, or your nightly news. So uh, please bear with me but fasten your seat belts. It's very important information. Uh, I submit can save millions of lives if understood. First of all, we need to, to look at what's in a name. Why are they calling it the swine flu all of a sudden? Uh, why is this uh, uh, important uh, information? Why, you know, even though there's been very few deaths in America or even in Mexico, what does this uh, portend as far as a, a pandemic that's planned? and coming, uh, the quote, inevitable pandemic. First of all, we need to understand that uh, the, the, the CDC and other scientists with the National Institutes of Health, uh, Mr. Alexander S. Jones and others who, who are employed by the uh, different uh, uh, centers of NIH and CDC to do computer models of uh, emerging viruses, uh, the, the reports that have come out uh, show there's actually three strains of so-called swine flu virus. Uh, there's a Mexican strain that is, is quite a bit different with its amino acid structures uh, and its gene clades than what has been found in, in San Diego, California and Texas, for instance. The American strain is similar but different. They're, they're like brother and sister strains. You have to understand that, okay? The important information that is not being given, the technical information that's not being given by CNN and the, the nightly newscast, is that this is a, what's called a recombination virus. It's not just a pure swine flu, per se. It is actually a combination of pig virus, swine virus. Also, there's two strains of Asian human flu, that's tied into this, and there's also, uh, heaven's sakes, an H5N1, a bird flu strain as well, tied into this recombination virus. So basically, you're looking at four uh, different viruses combined together in a genetic structure. Now, from a virologist's point of view, the odds of that happening in nature is about one in maybe 10 million or so. It's it's about like winning the lottery to get that combined in that form. Now, it's interesting to also show that the so-called 1918 virus, the pandemic virus called the Spanish flu back then, that killed uh, millions, as many as 50 million people worldwide, also had these exact same characteristics. There's a group uh, in uh, operating in Fort Detrick headed by Dr. Jeffrey Taubenberger who began to study this in 1997 in depth in reports and, and, and written published copy that it gave to a certain uh, group of funders that were funding his uh, project. He showed that it is a unique structure of pig virus bird virus and human virus from all over the world. And it combined in such a way to produce a unique event in the body. Uh, typically the virus didn't kill you, it was the body's immune response to that virus. Specifically what's called a cytokine storm. Uh, the, the body's immune system and through the, the lung secretions would cause an overreaction and causing a constriction of the bronchial tubes to the point where they began to hemorrhage and people would die from their, their blood in their lungs. That's what killed people largely uh, during the, the pandemic of 1918. 
It wasn't the virus itself that did it, it was the body's immune response to that virus. Now, how do we know this is, is factual? Well, let's just go back and, and, and first of all, I just want to just publicly say for the record, this shouldn't be called the swine flu vaccine at all, or swine flu uh, virus. It should be called the Breivik Alaska virus. Because here is, uh, here is the information uh, based on an, an Associated Press article, uh, March 26th of 2006, reconstructing the 1918 flu virus. Uh, starting in March of 1997, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in Rockville, Maryland, Dr. Jeffrey Taubenberger leads a team attempting to isolate the 1918 virus's genetic code from tiny samples of lung tissue. Well, this team, uh, led by Dr. Taubenberger, hit the mother load in uh, August 24th of 1997 in Brevik, Alaska. Uh, uh, a researcher there found uh, well-preserved influenza specimens from lung material from frozen bodies killed by the 1918 flu and the uh, researchers shipped this to Taubenberger and then days later Taub Taubenberger was able to indeed get the genetic fragments detected and then the, the story in Associated Press goes on and says March of 2005 Taubenberger's team deciphers the virus and its entire genetic code and completes the eight-year effort. Again, that's March of 2005. June 2005, Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York uh, took Taubenberger's work to the next level. They basically created plasmas, plasmids or DNA rings uh, carrying the 1918 virus structure and of all things made them viable by introducing them to kidney cells or what's called live cell, live cell transfers. So there you have the sequence of events leading now to the recreation, if you will, of this 1918 virus. And that the question must be asked for what purpose? Uh, who was funding Taubenberger's team and for what end? Now publicly, Taubenberger will tell you, and he, and he explained this in the PBS home video documentary called Killer Flu, that Taubenberger went on and, and explained this is solely for research purposes to create a vaccine against this virus when it, if it ever to recombine again. Well, creating a vaccine for um, an extinct viral pathogen is much like creating a, a, a laser weapon to guard against a, a team of velociraptor dinosaurs that are that are far and away uh, extinct and cannot be brought back to life except by scientific uh, meddling and scientific uh, means and that's really what's happening here from my viewpoint the the problem with the 1918 virus, uh, to recreate it, means you're, you're uh, weaponizing, if you will, a, a very lethal biological weapon. Now, we need to really explain the origins of the 1918 pathogen, the viral structure.